The role of Jax was something that Erica had dreamed up after she and I had worked together on a short film called Little Chief. And really, the character came before the story. Erica had a vision for the kind of character she wanted Jax to be. She want, wanting me to play it and, of course, me wanting to play her, however however that manifested. And then um, she, had, she knew she wanted um, an auntie and a niece story, and she wanted the story to end or have a big feature, at least, of the two dancing together, and that was it. Um, after working on Little Chief with Erica, I knew I would do anything she would do. I was hoping she would say that she had a feature in mind, um, and luckily she did. She writes... She writes in such a beautiful way that, you know, actors, when we get a script like anything Erica writes, we're just chomping at the bit to do it because it's so layered. It's not overdrawn. It's um, a lot of room for you to fill in on your own. But when I did get the final script and saw what this idea of a character would become that I always knew I would play, it was um, one of those, again, one of those moments where you get a script and you're just locked in from page one to page 92 or whatever the page count was originally. And I was so drawn into it. It's one of the, it's one of the screenplays that has stayed super true to the original read to every frame that you see in the film, because it was just so crafted. It was so um, built with love. It was so specific. Um, and Jax, who she ended up being, I was so relieved to see that this character was not a model minority, had flaws, had um, clearly a backstory that she had worked really hard to, um, to overcome, um, to do better for her family, for her niece, um, and kind of struggled with that. And I loved the sort of reluctant return into the belly of the beast that she had clearly in a previous time before we meet her had crawled her way out of. Um, but for what's necessary in the given circumstances in their world going back in for the love of her sister and then, of course, for the love of her niece. The relationship between Jax and Roki I thought was such a great love story that we rarely get to see. Um, it's the commitment to family, to continuity of culture, and to just keeping these two together. Um, it was really moving and one that is very understood and very universally felt, but you rarely get to see an experience in film. So I was really excited to go on the entire journey. And then for the whole time, just curious, curious, who's going to be Roki? Who's going to be our Roki? Who's going to be our Roki? And um, Erica, Isabel came across her desk for a different project and ultimately was a little young for that one, but perfect, read perfectly for the age of Roki and carried the kind of sophistication that was necessary to really land the, um, the subtleties and the nuances and the... Um, the maturity that Roki needed to have, um, you know, being a girl who's raised in a household where everybody pitches in, um, she learns to be independent pretty young. So it was a hard thing to try and find somebody who carried that youthful, you believe that she, you know, you believe that she really believes in um, the best possible outcome. You believe that she believes her mom is uh, going to come to this powwow. It's like you need to have somebody who has that bright-eyed sort of innocence, but also this wizened soul underneath it. And I was very curious <laughs> who, who would turn up. And then when um, I, I met Isabel on set, we never even had a chemistry read. Erica mm -hmm. just knew so immediately it was going to be her. So, yeah. <laughs> Your turn. My <laughs> turn. Yeah, you know, Roki... She's so young, and I think that getting to play a character that age was so fun because it really reminded me of myself at that age, and it reminded me of my cousins and my younger sibling, and it made me really happy to see that because she has that joy and she has that light and that curiosity, but she's just so quiet, <laughs> and I love her so much. And I think that that quiet but intentional presence was what really drew me to the role because 
she has her whole own little world inside her mind that you don't really get to hear ever, but you can really see it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just like props to Erica because, you know, the writing of it, like you said, it's not overstated. It's 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 just enough. It's lovely to read and to play with. Um, yeah. And yeah. the combination of Erica and Michiana created such a lived in world for us to step into and such a, you know, something that's so real. You know, both of them are such... Um, anchors in their families and their communities um, both have nieces, nephews, um, niblets <laughs> that they <laughs> that they um, that they care for, that look up to them. Um, so drawing that relationship was really a beautiful thing. I loved how genre it was too, mm -hmm. like getting the script, um, knowing that Erica and Michiana, even though her writing was new to me could create this world that was very um, minimal in a lot of ways, um, not demonstrative, just everything was created and allowed to be, but also that it's had a genre element. It had intrigue. It had suspense. I One of my favorite movies to watch when I was a kid was Paper Moon with my dad. And um, it was lovely to see that there was something like Paper Moon or something like Thelma and Louise out there for an indigenous uh, an indigenous space um, created for us to have some fun with. So. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that this film is going to have the reach that it's going to have because... I think a lot of the themes in it, I think a lot of elements of the world that we meet these characters living in, a vast um, a vast number of people worldwide will understand it, will resonate with it, will see themselves in it in some way. And then also it will help focus a lens that there's been recent interest, um, like just coming out of having this beautiful season and reception for Killers of the Flower Moon, um, knowing that Fancy Dance is going to sit on the same platform, is going to queue up after an audience watches Killers of the Flower Moon, and um, has been given this gift of this family of indigenous women that love each other um, tremendously, that suffered incredible atrocity and um i think watching that film audiences who do fall in love with the kyle sisters who do fall in love with the osage family and the characters in that are oftentimes left wanting to spend more time in that world wanting more answers wanting more of that and then having fancy dance queuing up right after it a hundred years later taking place in the same land same issues that haven't gone anywhere. Missing murdered indigenous peoples did not start in the 1920s in the era of Killers of the Flower Moon, and it certainly hasn't gone anywhere. Um, it's something that touches every indigenous life, and it's one of the bigger issues for us. It's something we all have an awareness of. You'd be hard pressed to find any indigenous person that doesn't know a missing or murdered indigenous relative. Um, yet it's still shocks people when they learn about it. Um, so, also, um, you know, learning about how different elements of, um, of our history have, have also not gone anywhere. The, um, I hope audiences get a glimpse into a world that they maybe are unfamiliar with, but will feel familiar. That's how you build empathy. That's how you understand your place in the world and understand other people's place in the world. Um, and yeah, it'll um, expand the lens of what people know is possible. Mm -hmm. And what I think is so great is that Jax and Roki and their stories and even just the way that they are, it's so real and it's so lived in because these stories are so real. And, you know, so many people, even just in North America, you know, we we're on indigenous land. And so the fact that so many people are still so unaware of these stories and, you know, how close to home they are, 
they, I think this film gives people an opportunity to actually do that work and do that learning. And I just hope that after watching it, they just want to learn more. And there's that desire to put in the work because, you know, it's happening all around us all the time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I'm just very grateful to be a part of it. <laughs>